I think because Raymond and, and I had both come from other countries, we were immigrants, we came here in 1983, Raymond from South Africa, me from the United Kingdom. When we came here as immigrants, with a suitcase each, our goal was to pursue the American dream. You know, this idea that entrepreneurship and, and hard work could really deliver the greatest opportunity. So when we came here and we established the International Dermal Institute and it was successful and then we launched Dermalogica in 1986 and we already had then hundreds of students that had trained with us that were ready for the product. When we launched the product at the first trade show, we had students coming up with a check for $1,500 in their hand and, and handing it to us. And, and I remember saying to several of them, well, I haven't even shown you the product yet. We had testers of the product. We couldn't afford to do the whole run. So we had testers and this was January and we were gonna deliver the full run in March. And they said to me, it's okay, Jane. I trust you and Raymond. And if you're in, I'm in, and I'm in. And I just felt such a rush and a huge responsibility, and that just cascaded. Our first year at Dermalogica was like a whirlwind. I mean, we were working every hour. I don't know how many hours a week we were working. We were just working to keep up with the demand. And we realized quickly, within a year, 1987, we were getting requests from overseas, from distributors that said, I've heard about your product, I've seen your product, I was on vacation in America, my sister lives in San Francisco, I want to be involved. We weren't deterred about going international because we'd come from international markets. We'd come from markets where we understood distribution of international products and we knew, great, uh, okay, let's go for it. First country we opened was uh, Taiwan. After that, Malaysia. We were going throughout Southeast Asia. I spent three months training throughout Southeast Asia. I was training everybody that would sit still long enough for me to teach them how to use the product. I would say I can take 24 people in a class and teach them practical, and there'd be 134 on the morning of the class. And I'd say, okay, well look, all right, just sit on the floor here, stand over there, you two share a chair there, and you know, let's try and go for it. It was crazy and fantastic. We launched in Australia before we opened in New York, for very good reason. The Australians already had a fantastic, good training program. We had a ready-built market. New York State didn't even have a skincare license at that stage. So our opportunity, oftentimes overseas, was, was quicker and bigger than here in the United States. So we seized the international market, and as we did that, as we were thinking all the time globally, it became a hallmark of Dermalogica's success because if one country was in a recession, we didn't have all our eggs in one basket. We were throughout the world. And we hired an international team in equal number to our domestic US team. And I also believe because we, we had this mindset, this vision of a global tribe of skin therapists, of Dermalogica being a democratized brand, being a brand that would be embraced globally. It was non-gender specific. We purposefully didn't make the product you know, pink and gold or make it at all gender specific to women. The name, Dermalogica, it was this hybrid between a pharmaceutical product and a skincare product. It felt quasi-medical. It was all purposeful and it translated perfectly in every market. And so because of that, we were able to spread quickly. And as we did that, I saw firsthand the inconsistencies of opportunities around the world, especially for women. And that kept coming back to me and coming back to me. And I kept realizing when I would teach in countries where women had so so many fewer opportunities than the opportunities that I'd had growing up or in my career. I was just determined that somehow we were going to be able to impact that. I realized that there were women that were not in our industry that also would have no hope of having a chance of a career like ours. And all of that bundled together and cascaded in our 25th anniversary where we decided that we were going to do something about it. We had a global footprint, we had a platform and a voice. And in 2011, in January, for our 25th anniversary of Dermalogica, we launched our program Fight, Financial Independence Through Entrepreneurship, which has now embraced also financial independence through education. 
because that's the crux of what made us successful. Education and entrepreneurship. Education of the skin therapists that work in a salon, entrepreneurship for those therapists that want to own their own business. And we know how to do that. And so we made a commitment that we're going to roll out our support, our funding and our knowledge to women around the world who want to start and grow their own business. And I'm really proud that we just celebrated in 2018 100,000 women funded by the FIGHT program. And now in 2019, we're rolling out into the education piece in our industry. So that idea of total world domination of professional skincare took a lot of unexpected turns, but the greatest turn it took, that early visualization, was not only empowering our industry to be more successful, but using our industry as a blueprint for how women around the world could realize their own financial independence. And for me, it's probably one of the things I'm the most proud of. That and daily microphone.